Hey, everybody, on this edition of the Fit Rockstar Show, we have, I, I love this guy, amazing physique, IFBB pro, champion, Olympian, Samson Dauda. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Really appreciate it. Well, thank you for making the time. Now, are you in the U.S. currently, or are you in the U.K.? Uh, as of today, I'm in the U.K. Um, tomorrow evening, I'm flying to the U.S. Oh, wow. How long is your flight? Oh, man. I think I'm going to the flight in Texas, so I think it's about eight hours, I think. Oh, okay. Well, that's not too bad. That's yeah, not too bad. First class, right? <laughs> no, my ass is a... <laughs> no, no middle seat, right? Oh, no, no. You know... Is this uh, your uh, Mastiff behind you? Oh, well, that's my dog. He's sleeping. Oh. Now, that's <laughs> a Mastiff? What kind of dog do you have? Yeah, Italian Mastiff, Italian yeah. Mastiff. What's, boy or girl? Boy. What's his name? Uh, Cerberus. Oh, wow. Oh, he's cute. That way, he'll pop his head up in a minute and then start disturbing me. So listen, um, I'm really excited that you're on here, and I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, I know you go by the Nigerian Lion because you're from originally Nigeria, right? Yeah. Do you still have family there? Um, yeah, my, uh, I still have my dad. Still lives there, and he kind of moves between. Okay. But he's still there. My sister is still over there. So yeah, I think I'll be able to family still there. How does it How does it make you uh, feel when people compare you to the next Flex Wheeler or Lee Haney? I was crazy, man. I, I can't help but be, be sort of like just be emotional about it because those are the guys I was watching when I started my bodybuilding journey. And I was admired by their physique and just looking at them going, wow, they look absolutely. I mean, they, they were the embodiment of what I aspired to be, you know, doing the sport in the first place. They pulled me into it. So when now people say something like that, it was almost surreal. And it's just like, wow, you know, it couldn't, that's the biggest compliment I can ever ask for. Honestly. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, when I, I first spot you, I, saw you a few years ago and I was, my mind was blown because you have such a, and I know you hear it all the time, but you really are so well put together, your structure, the tiny little waist that you have, and you're a massive guy. Um, I know that you're over to 300 mark now, which we'll get into that here in a little bit. But uh, when I saw you, of course, I think to myself, man, this could be the next Mr. Olympia. This guy has Olympia all over him. And, you know, I'm not the only one to think that, obviously. But, uh, man, what's interesting about you is your story. And so I wanted yeah. to talk more about where you came from because you really didn't know anything about bodybuilding. Uh, no. Out uh, from 2014, when I decided to do my first show, I didn't have a clue about bodybuilding. I had a friend that had um, he owns a gym, and he was into it at a time. And I sort of went for him for, like, gym tips, but I never had any idea about what bodybuilding was or what it entails of anything. Is, is you know? this Chris Jones? Is this the guy? Yeah. So, so let's go into that real quick. So I, cause I wanted to ask you about Chris. He's very proud of you. You can tell this guy loves you. Um, what is your, how did you guys meet? How did that happen with you stepping into the gym and all that stuff? We actually met with his wife. Basically I was working in the hospital as a porter at the time. And, you know, and his wife was a nurse at the hospital. So I was chatting to him one evening, and I said, look, I'm looking to, like, get put in, you know, put in work at the gym. I want to put on some weight because I was really, I think I was about 11 stone at the time, you know, very small, skinny guy. And she was, oh, my husband is a bodybuilder, you know. If you chat to him, he'll give you advice, uh, some advice. He owns a gym just down the road. So I was like, yeah, okay, go on then. So, you know, I took a trip up to his gym, and it was like this proper old-school bodybuilding gym right down in the basement, dark, oh, wow. the whole thing. So being a young kid, you know, walking in there, and as soon as I walked, opened the door and went in there, there's this big guys all standing by the reception, all having a laugh. And automatically I was thinking, oh, I've made a big mistake. <laughs> Why did I come here? What am I doing? You know, that whole persona of big bodybuilders, oh, my God, there's no way I belong, selfie, just kicked in. And, you know, right from the get-go, I came in and said, you know, hi, I here to see Chris. He jumps up and he's happy to see me. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard about you. And he's talking to me and everything else, and he's giving me advice. And he just kind of like gave me a simple diet advice, like, look, you got to eat more, you got to do this, you got to do that. Just a simple basic stuff, like, well, little, little to him, I took it on the air. Like, I really went, I went with it. So a few months later, I come back and I see him and go, look, I've been following what he said. And he couldn't believe the changes on me. And he automatically was like, man, wow, like, you really are doing this. 
And even at that time, it wasn't even an idea of, oh, I want to do bodybuilding. It was just, oh, yeah, I took your advice. I put on some muscle. You know, where do I go from here? So we just kind of had that relationship where every time I needed something, uh, anything to do with fitness, I always called him up and asked him. He was my go-to guy for asking for yeah. advice. So that's how our relationship kind of grew into it. So fast forward, I mean, this was back in 2009. So fast forward, like, a few years later, 2014, you know, I was playing um, prof- I was playing rugby at the time for my, for my for the, uh, what do they call it, for the town I was in. And they basically, you know, loads of the guys, you know, in the changing rooms, the changing, stripping off. Those the guys kept on saying to me, yo, you know what, you got a great physique on you. You ever thought about doing, like, a show or competition or something like that? And I was like, come on, man, I, I ain't about that life. What are you talking about? That ain't for me. What are you talking about? You know, and several, I kept on getting those comments like, you know what, man, you're really well put together. You know, you need to think about it. So I never really thought anything much about it. And then I met my, my girlfriend in the gym once, and she said the same thing to me when we started training together in the gym. And I was like, okay, you know, everybody seems to be saying this thing about, oh, bodybuilding, bodybuilding, bodybuilding. Let me just have a look and see what it's about. So I went to Chris, and I spoke to him about it. And, you know, Chris is, like, telling me, I, even then I was a bit naive about it. I, I'll just, you know, walk, rock up as I am, pick a show, rock up as I am, and just get in there and just like, yeah, great. And Chris was, you know, he's giving me the, oh, you got to take months to uh, to prep into the show and all this. I'm like, nah, I ain't got time for all that. So at that minute, he just killed it. And I'm just like, nah, it wasn't for me, you know. And then after a while, you know, slowly, I started looking into it and just, like, sort of picking parts. And the first Olympia I, w- I watched was 2013 Mr. Olympia. Mm-hmm. You know, that was the first one. And I, I was just blown away by it. I was like, oh, my God, this is unreal, you know. And it just kind of caught me to that point. I'm thinking, okay, you know what? I want, I want, I want to do this. I want, I want to try it out, you know. So we started talking to Chris. He's telling me, okay, you got to do this. You got to do that. You got to die. You got you to train. You got to do this. You got to work on that. And we just started, you know, go our heads together. You know, me and my missus, we just kind of put our heads together and say, okay, right. Let's go for it. And this was like the beginning of 2014. We picked out a show in um, April, just like four months into the year. It was just a local show. And we said, okay, you know what? I'll, I'll go for that show. I'll go for that for the show. So we just kind of just kind of worked our way into it. And, you know, didn't, didn't do much in terms of dieting. Just like... Just yeah, what was your gym. diet like for your first show? Oh, I was like, having pancakes. <laughs> I was chicken, chicken wings. And, what was your uh, weight was, at this time? Huh? What was your weight for your first show? At the time, I was, I was coming down from 110 kilos. So I was coming down to about, I came down to, I think, about 102. I don't know what it is in pounds. I had to transfer at that point. But, I might have to look that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, no, I mean, that's like, so in your first show, how did you do? Oh, uh, I did the first time a show. It was like a big event for the whole town sort of thing. And you had like, the guys have never competed before. They have like a category for them for the first time. Like a guys. novice? Yeah, the novice mm-hmm. class. And then later on that evening, they have the bigger boys jump in and they do a class in there. So my whole goal with that show was, oh, I just want to win the first time. I want to, sure. I want to. So first thing in the morning, I did the first time I show. And I remember being backstage then and stripping off for it. And what people didn't know at the time, I, before this whole process, for me, I was really, really extremely conscious about taking my clothes off. I just never show myself in public, not at the pool, not at the beach. No. Wow, why? I, you just embarrassed or? Embarrassing. I just, it was never me, you know. I was never that guy that I like drawing attention. I always wanted to be, you know, in the background. I never wanted to draw attention at all. Like, it just did not, it made me very extremely uncomfortable, you know. So when we were all at the gymnasium ready to strip off to go on stage, I looked, it, I remember it took them 20 minutes to finally get me to strip <laughs> off, to, you know. Because I was standing there going, oh, I'm, 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 I'm not ready. I'm not ready. No, no. And I was like, look, you got to go on stage. Get your clo- Come on, get your clothes off. And I had to literally psych myself out to take my so clothes you wasn't, off. Even though you were at a body line show, you didn't want to take your clothes off. Did no. you not Did you not get the memo on this part where you got to go down in your undies? Yeah, it didn't have to happen. But, you know, I just, it, was a, it was almost like a, it was a boundary I had to cross. That's for the first. funny. That's great. <laughs> so I remember... At that moment, I stripped off, and I remember the room going extremely quiet. And I was really conscious. And I was like, oh, here we go. Right. You know. And even then, we were on this appeal because I was never good in standing in front of people. I was never good in expressing myself. I was never good in that being in the front center of attention like that. So going on stage in front of family, friends, so many people, you know, it was, it was 
it was the furthest thing from me at right. the possible thing. So we didn't know how I would react on stage. We didn't know if if I would just break and crumble or if I would just get caught like there in the headlights or what would happen. So we queued up, we had to go on stage, and I'm obviously just like everybody else, completely bricking it, just shivering and shaking Aww. and like what the hell am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? So we walk out on stage and they announced us coming out on stage. And I remember taking a step out of stage and a light switch just went off. And all of a sudden, I'm walking up and down the stage confidently. I'm I'm raising up, I'm doing all that. And we I come off stage and everyone was like, where the hell did that come from? I'm like, I have no idea. They were like, you were the most confident person on stage. You didn't even look like you've done this a thousand times. And I was like, I have no idea. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why. It just, it just felt natural to be on there, you know. So from that one, we did the first time this class, and I won that class. And I was like, oh, yeah, I did it. You know, felt good. Sure. I remember the promoter of the show. He was so impressed. And he came backstage and he told me, you know what? We got the big boys coming in later on this evening. If you stick around, I want you to get in, this, get in class with them and just see how you do. So I'm like, okay, hell, got nothing. I will go where I came from, nothing to lose. So we went up to the evening, and then the bigger guys come back, saying they're pumping up and they're ready. And I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, holy crap, there's some big boys here, you know. And we're pumping up backstage. And one of the guys, I remember one of the guys from when one of the show promoters came to me. And he goes, I think you can win this class. And I'm looking at him, going, Are you out of your mind? <laughs> I'm like, see the guys that are here. And he goes, Oh, I think I think you're gonna take it. And I'm like, okay, you know. So we get up on stage, we go round after round. And then towards the end of the night, they call in the rewards. And then I win that class as well. And Were you that surprised? Moment, oh, I was completely shocked about oh. that one. I was completely shocked and taken back at that one, you know. And after the show, people coming up to me and saying, look, you know what? You need to sort of take this seriously because I think you go a long way. You can go a long way in this sport. It's something you really need to look into, not just as a little hobby, but something that you can seriously go a long way in. So at that point, you know, I just got to be bad at it, And I was like, okay, it looks like <laughs> this is something I want to do. People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm going to grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables. F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. You know, and I had a lot of fun. That's the thing. I had a lot of fun on stage. You know, it was just so appealing to me. It just drew me, you know, it, it made me bring out a side of me that I never knew I had. You yeah, know. so it's interesting. You're all nervous before going on stage, and then you get up there, and it's like it goes away, and you're just the most confident guy, which is incredible. So, you know, I mean, listen, your body's incredible. Just you overall, you're an entertainer, which is also what I love about you is that you give bodybuilding something that it needs, entertainment. You're an okay. excellent poser, and, uh, you know, it's just awesome. But what was funny in one of your interviews, I was, you know, when I was uh, researching you is – how your your girl had to look up books like she was getting all these books and stuff and learning tell me about this so so this is before you got into the shows this is like when you're starting to get interest right so obviously we started to get into and i don't chris lives like two towns over from me he's a long drive away so my girl is the only one that i knew that even had any inkling of bodybuilding and diet and everything else and where she's done um, dietary course and everything before she basically, I mean, she's definitely, she's like a book nerd. She loves reading, you know, she's on it. So she put her head in it and she's reading all the books she can find on bodybuilding, everything she can muster, everything about diet. So she basically was just reading her knowledge and passing it and using that to prep me for shows. Wow. <laughs> we were just kind of, we were learning. And then from there, we started watching like YouTube, like Dave Palombo and all them guys. Sure. We were watching you. We were learning bodybuilding from all these content and all these books and stuff like that. We didn't have anybody to talk to. We didn't have anybody to reach out to say, hey, you know, I want everybody to be, what can you do? <laughs> other than Chris, I didn't have any other outcome right. in it. I even remember, like, I had to, I was, one time I was watching, like, I think I was throwing to my phone, and I saw a black guy getting a spray tan. And I was like, what's that? Really? And I remember having to message Chris and say, what, what is he doing? And he goes, oh, it's spray tan. You're going to need to get that before your show. And, I'm th- and I genuinely thought he was trying to take the, he was taking a piss. I thought he was trying to have a crack right. joke with me. 
I was like, no, he's not. And he's like, he's like, yeah. I was like, what do I need a tan for? You're right. kidding me. <laughs> and I remember having to Google that, that right. and check up, just to confirm that, oh, crap, I actually do need a straight tan, you know? So the world of it was so far from anything that I knew or we knew of anything like that. So we had to do our own research. For the first three years of body, me, body, wow. we had to learn everything ourselves, you know, how the diet works, what my body responds to, what it doesn't respond to, what to try, what not to try. We had to sort of like fire it away. And because I didn't have a lot of money at the time either, I couldn't hire a coach or hire someone. Everything had to be done with just the, from the work I was doing. I'm like, look, I'm putting into it, you know. And yeah, so you kind of, you know, in hindsight, it sort of gave, me a, gave us a chance for us to learn my body right at early stages and sort of think, okay, what I respond to, what I don't, what my body is like. And it sort of kind of gave an opportunity to sort of made our mistakes at that time and find a way to kind of counter go around it, you know. So, yeah, she had to literally, she had to learn everything. I think go with that me. is so sweet, though, that you have a partner who is very supportive of every single thing that you do because, you know, in relationships in this sport, it's, it's hit or miss sometimes, you know, so... And I got to, I got to, uh, that's Marlene, right? Yeah. yeah Marlene, she's yeah. a sweetheart. I mean, I just, you can just tell, like, you're like everything to her, you know? And that's. We, like, I keep saying, like, you know, people say, oh, why do I use the term we? Because it's been me and her from the minute we ever, we found bodybuilding together. Oh. We went every show by show, mistake by mistake, falls, everything. We went through every single one of it together. You know, so when we went to the downs, it was both of us were in the downs. When we went to the ups, we were both of us. So we, you know, she knows every single thing I've done since I started this sport. So she's been there and great in that, invested in it just as much as I have, you know. So it just kind of takes thought that now when you get to this point where you're thinking, actually, hey, we're doing well here. It's we're doing well here. You know, we both went from where we were to where we are now. And it's, you know, you can't, it's very rare to find someone that can commit themselves to you like that. You know? What's the secret? Because you guys have been together for a, for a long time, right? Um, we just we just up front with each other. I mean, you know, they all, we would like to portray themselves like this perfect relationship, and we are not the perfect relationship. <laughs> heads, we fight, we argue. Is all. that when you're hungry? Oh yeah, even normal times we argue. The thing is, but we know that deep down we know we care for each other. Sure. So, sure. You no, know, we don't. You know, people like to portray this perfect relationship. I don't think at all relationship, real relationship ain't perfect. You know, so we bump heads back and forth all the time. And we, because we're both very headstrong personalities. So I don't like to give an inch. She doesn't like to give an inch either. <laughs> right. All you get is just that all the time. In the background of all that is, okay, we care, you know. So that is so sort of how we just kind of get on and move in. We just know each other through time of not just through the sweet times, but through the bitters as well. And we just know what we're both like. Mm-hmm. And this is what's getting us as far as we have. So I got to ask, you met her in the gym, you said. Did, was it while she was doing squats? Yeah. Was it? No, I'm being, I'm being honest. How did you, when did you spe- uh, see her? Like, what oh, What was it? It was, it was funny because she was training in the gym and I was so training. And it was a funny thing because at the time, it was almost like you admire, you see someone in the gym that you like and everything else. And you almost think, okay. You know, we went to the same gym for weeks and we never spoke to each other. We kind of just kind of looked from the far apart at everything else. And we never, he never made a first move, nothing like that. And eventually I had one of my friends that was a PT at the gym. And he was almost the middle man saying, oh, yo, she likes you. Oh, yeah, she told me she likes you. Oh, you know, and he's playing this middle part of it. And eventually it was just like, you know, we were, we were both hard-headed and we didn't know wait for who's going to make the first move first. And eventually, we just got to talking. I think we just kind of bumped heads one time. We just started talking. I remember she was saying to me that, oh, that I look so aggressive and mean when I'm at the gym. She thought oh. I just got... She's like, oh, <laughs> like, when you're training in the gym, you don't talk to anybody, you don't smile, you don't do anything. And she goes, although that's appealing, you say at the same time, it's, it's sort of a scary put-off thing. And she was like, oh, yeah, you know, I thought, I thought, I genuinely thought that you just got out of prison or something. Oh, because- my God. You know, so, but yeah, we just got to talking from that point and things just kind of progressed from there. she got out of prison. That's, <laughs> okay, that's funny. Now, she seems like a really great sweetheart. Um, but moving fast forward, so when did you decide, you know what, I'm going to become a pro? Because I know well, you had the, what, what was it at the time? The British Championships were only 
Yeah, the British Championship. I think, you know, in the UK at the time, one pro bodybuilder gets to win wow. a year. And that was it. You know, the winner of the British Championships gets their pro card. And, you know, I mean, I have Chris, I've been doing it for 20 years, and he's never managed it. You know, everybody was fighting for that title. It was the most confident title you could have in the whole of bodybuilding in the UK. And, you know, soon as I found out that, okay, how do you get to the Olympia? How do you become pro? What, what does it take? And then we sort of learned, okay, you got to do a qualifier, qualify for the British Championship, and then you got to win the British Championship on the overall of the British Championship where you get a pro card. So that became our main focus. And I was like, okay, that's what I want to be. I want to go to the Olympia. You know, that's my dream. That's what I want to do. I've never felt... I've done loads of different sports throughout my whole life and played different games and stuff like that, but it was the first sport where I felt that, you know what, without an ounce of a doubt, I was able to give it 100% and make it. So it became this full driving force of, okay, that's what we got to do. That's what, let's do it, you know. So we just basically put our head down and we said, okay, what does it take? And then I think after doing our first year in 2014, 2015 was, okay, let's go into the British. Let's get out riding the British. So I remember doing two shows then, winning two shows and qualifying for the British Championships. And in my first attempt, I think we were the super heavies. I came third in my first my first attempt. I think that was the year um won that I think it was um Sassan won that one the first year. You know, he won that he was that was when he won his pro card. And for me, I think Nathan won the year before. Yeah. So it was like, okay, this is you are watching the guys have done it, and then you think, okay, that's the route you have to go. And you know, it's just like you work towards it, you know. And that's where we just kind of like, you know, put our head down towards. And you got pro card in uh, 2017? Yes, yeah, yeah. So it was 2017, uh, British Championship, came second to James Hollingshead. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and that was very painful, painful loss. Right. By one point or two points or something like that. And then the following week, you know, I remember being so ticked off and thinking, you know what, I ain't letting this go. And then following, we flew to Italy and they were doing the Diamond Cups then. Uh-huh. And I went there and I won the overall in Italy and I got my pro card. I think one week after James got his, wow. you know, <laughs> you know. Well, uh, you know, again, uh, it's so funny because I remember you talking about your first pro show yeah. and like you're thinking, oh, yeah, yeah, you've got this kind of deal. And then you see, who was it, Rolly? Oh, Rolly. Yes. <laughs> that was, the thing is, like, every time I prep for a show, no matter how much I'm like, okay, you know, I just want to give my best. I just want to go in and give sure. my best. I know that doesn't stick for less than two weeks. As soon as I start prepping, my best becomes, no, I'm going to win. I don't care. I'm going to win. And I can't, it, it's not like you choose that. Mentally, you start going to the gym, you start suffering. And automatically, you start going to the idea of, I'm not doing this. I'm not suffering like this for nothing. I'm going to win. So no matter what show I do, that always becomes the mental state, whether I like it or not. Okay. It becomes a case of, I'm going to win. So I remember prepping my first pro show, and it was EVLS Prague. And we were prepping for it. And that same mentality switched on. And I know that Rolly is doing the show. Nathan is doing the show. Lucas also there. This is like a vet. This is like a, and I'm still prepping in the show going, I'm going to win. Of course I'm going to win. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> and at the same time, you know, you it's, it's, it's laughing. You're laughing. But you, at the time, you, you get caught up in that. Sure. that you have that mindset. I remember, okay, being backstage at the show, my first pro show. And, you know, pumping up. And then Rolly walks out. And then it was like a, oh, okay, that's the deal. <laughs> and then it was, I'm like, yeah, okay, uh, all right, I guess I'm going to be playing for fifth. <laughs> you know, so, you know, so I think we, did, we came fifth of that after my first pro show. And even then, it was almost like, a, okay, I've seen something that is beyond anything I've ever seen before. Well, I mean, Ruli's got those arms, man, and just... <laughs> exactly, you know. <laughs> insane. Insane looking for Z. Yeah. So I don't... I saw that. I was like, I want that. You know, I, I want, I want, I want to look like that. You know, so it just kind of fueled me in as well. You know, it gave me that fire even more. That now I'm seeing it. I'm like, okay, there's levels to bodybuilding, and you just witness the higher level of it. Sure. Okay. I have to get back to work. You know. But again, nobody has what you have. They don't have that that tiny waist just that will complete package you know i don't know if roly's going to be still competing or not but you know i always liked him and um you know he oh. had a crazy physique but you see what happened he kept on his physique kept on going down yeah. hopefully he'll come back because you know again he's a great competitor but you 
man, um, what I wanted to talk about was, uh, okay, so now you're, it, you want to get up to 330 pounds. This is what Milos is trying to get you at. Yeah, he is. And um, you're yeah. 310 right now? Or? I'm 310 right now. What is, what was that? You cut out, what was that? 315 pounds right now. 315. Jeez. Okay, you got to walk me back. When you guest pose at the Flex, what was it, the Flex, Flexman Classic? You have to tell me, please, because I'm a fan. Yeah. What did everybody do when you started walking out on that stage in the condition that you was in at 300 pounds? You got to tell me the reactions. Right, we've been like we've hit 300 pounds before, and for us, we've around people that have seen me in the flesh, they've seen it, so it's not really. But well, we've never been walked out in guest poses before sure. like that. So it was like okay. This will be very interesting for them, for people to see you on stage that way. So when we were like, okay, guest pose when I spot, I had this grin on my face. And like, this is going to be fine. This is going to be entertaining. So we obviously, you know, did the routine, talk about routine and everything else. And we were backstage. And as soon as we were pumping up, even everybody was kind of looking, going, holy crap. <laughs> right. Like, you know, and there was always this moment where you walk out on stage and you can almost feel the pause and the breath the audience take when they see you. And for me, I live for that. I absolutely live. That moment was like, it's always the, yep, that's what I wanted. You know, of course, so you yeah. almost feel everything go, and the pause and the audience kind of like, holy, everybody's in shock. Like what? And you walk out to that and it's, it's, it's sublime. And it really, it really kind of talks to, really takes you back when you get that and you feel like, yeah, that's it. I that's mean, what 300 I, pounds. Now you're 315 going for 330. That says a lot. Now, Listen, when you came out at the Arnold, you know, I, I was there. Every, yeah. Everybody went ape crap crazy when you walked out because it was oh. mind-blowing. I mean, again, the way you're put together, the way you pose is art. I look at you on stage. I see nothing but muscle art. I mean, just beautiful, you know. I mean, you really take that posing, um, you take it above and beyond. Thank you. Because the thing is, when I, as I said, when I started watching Body Green, I was watching Flex with uh, Sean Ray, all those guys. And I watched them pose, even Kai Green. And it was, even when you didn't know anything about Body Green, you didn't have a clue. Watching someone that big, that defined, move like that smoothly, it's so beyond what you think is possible. So you don't, they don't never tell you that guys that big can never move so smoothly. So when you see it happening in front of you, you're so taken back for it by it. And you're so like, wow, just wow. So watching that for years and sort of being, you know, inspired by that, I thought, you know what? That's exactly what I want to be when I get on stage. I want to be able to come out, look, oh, wow, but then be able to move smoothly through, through pose by pose. I don't care how much I got to practice. I don't know what I got to do. But that, that's exactly the same effect I want to have when I'm on stage. That ability to just captivate you. You might not win the show, but people are so captivated by what you do, mm -hmm. seeing you on mm -hmm. stage. They think, man, I remember that. I remember that for a long time coming. So that's one thing we always strive for every single time, regardless of when I'm 300 pounds or 180 or whatever, we always want to strive for having that, that feeling, giving people that feeling when you walk on stage and really making them just stop and look at it and go, that's just art. That's just what it is. You can't get away from that. You know? But you have come from a lot of, you had a very difficult time there. Um, you know, and I want to talk about that because your video that you had made actually made me cry when I watched it because I can feel, I can literally feel the pain that you were going through because it was just devastating, you know. Yeah. And I want to talk about that because I feel that you're such a strong person that you were, it looked like you were so close to just saying screw it, but you didn't. You kept on fighting for what you wanted. So I have to ask, when you were quarantined for two weeks, and you're you're literally training in your room with what bands? Yeah, how was you that, eating? How was you eating your meals? I mean, that's crazy. Because obviously, what happened in 2020 with everything happening? I mean, I think before the whole Corona everything lockdown started, I was already meant to be prepared for Arnold Brazil, which was the first time I ever got invited for Arnold. So for me, this was a big year. This, this sure. was like wow. And I really wanted, I was giving my heart at work for that year because before that, I was thinking, you know what, if it's ever going to happen now, it's going to happen now. If not now, not at all. So I came in that year with like whatever it takes. So when we started off to prep for the show and then I think we were about six weeks out and whole corona hit and everything shuts down. 
So at that point, we had a question going, okay, right. At the time, we didn't know it obviously it was going to last this long. So it was like, okay, do you stop prep and scrap everything and then start again later? Or do you keep going and just wait for things to open up and then you're going to do your first show that opens up? So we decided that, okay, keep prepping. Once a show is open up, we'll do, we'll do that show. So we carried on prepping. So obviously one week, two weeks, three weeks, you know, before you know it, you're going in, Next show, New York Pro is canceled. Chicago Pro is canceled. That show is canceled. Mm-hmm. You go in every single time. You get about four weeks out. Oh, that show has been canceled. Now you're ten weeks out. Okay, you prep again. <laughs> then you get another show. Canceled. Then you back again. And you kind of went through through the whole from you know from April all the way through to August, like that. After a while, and you're so driven. You you know you have this mind going. No, I'm, I don't care. I said I will do whatever it takes. I will do whatever it takes. So it then came out that finally Tampa Pro was going ahead. You know, and I'm like. Right, that's the one. Okay, we, we're ready, let's do it. So we went off, we did all the paperwork with government, try to get everything so we make sure we do that show. So go all the information you can, go the visas, go everything else, fly to the U.S. The weekend, I think it was a Thursday, drove to the Heathrow Airport, about to fly out, and the guy that was there from Homeland Security said, basically said to me, no, we, we can't let you fly. You know, and I'm like, you know, what do you mean? I got this paper. I got everything. I'm proven. I'm not going there for a holiday. I'm not going for fun. I'm only going there to do the show, and I'll be back the next day. Look, this is, and he just was not having any of it, you know. And at that point, you feel like, okay, you've put all your time, your effort, your money, everything into this thing, and it's all just been thrown out the window, you know. And you're feeling crushed and devastated. Mm-hmm. At this point, you've gone from one show after show, and it's council, 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 and everything. It feels like almost your your life is falling apart. You like. Everything you've sacrificed right. for, going out. So I remember going home that day, and I was so angry and so pissed off and so just raging that we thought, okay, you know what? Let's take a trip up to the parks and just have a weekend and just relax. So we took a trip up to, up north and kind of chilling the parks and everything else. And we looked, so looking at the calendar, and then there was a show in South Korea, and that was in two weeks' time. And I'm like, oh, you know, what would it take if I want to go to South Korea? Can British? Can we allowed to fly there? Sure. So, well, you're allowed to fly to South Korea. So I'm like, okay, so I'm calling the promoters over there going, look, I'm thinking about doing a show. Like, what, what's, what's the bound? What do we need to have, have to do it? And he basically said to me, okay, this is the deal. Uh, you, you can't from, come fly there from the UK. You can't fly here to compete and everything else, but you have to be quarantined for 14 days before you can compete. So I'm like, okay. At this moment, I'm thinking, okay, quarantine, probably like a hotel. You know, you probably walk around the hotel, you know, go to the gym, use the hotel gym mm-hmm. and stuff. No big deal. I'm like, okay, that, that don't sound too bad. I know I can order takeaway. I'm um, order food from from outside. They can send food. So I didn't see it as a big deal. So I was like, oh, yeah, I'll probably be able to, I'll do that. So we like we called. So we called the um, South Korean embassy to find out more detail about quarantine. And then we find out that no, it's literally you in your room. You can't have food brought to you. <laughs> and you can't leave that room for 14 wow. days. You can't do anything. You literally have to be in there for the full 14 days. And that's it. So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, in my head, I was already committed. So I was like, you know what? Hell, why not? Go ahead. And, you know, I'm thinking no, no one else, no one else will ever do this. So I'm thinking, this is crazy, but you know what? You said you would do whatever it takes. Right. Well, that's what it will take. So I'm like, all right, let's pack our stuff. Let's go. So I remember at that time, you know, we grabbed all the food we can. I didn't bother with clothes. I didn't, I literally just stuck all the, froze all the food I had and stuck it in the bag. Yeah, yeah, right. And, you know, flew out there. And when we go out there, it was basically that, you know, from the airport, we got almost interrogated for hours. Oh, why are you here? What do we... And I'm like, yeah, do you know you have to quarantine? Yeah, I know. Yeah, we prepared. Yeah, no, no. And, you know, and then when you finally go through this whole process after a long 15 hours flight, you're completely exhausted. They take you to the hotel. Sure. They take you to the room, shut the door. And that's you. You can't leave that for 14 days. So, <laughs> so I'm in there 14 days. I'm thinking, you know what? Okay, this is what you this is what you committed to. Get your ass to work. So we got the bands, we got, you know, anything we can. I'm like, okay, improvise. Every workout, improvise a way sure. to do it. Walk and you know, we're two weeks away from the show. Do now, were you want. working with John at the time? Oh no. no, this was just me at the time, you know. Wow. So we basically did that. We improvised all we could for the work. And then the day I was due to finally 14 days, bam, about to leave, the promoters called me on the show going, Okay, um, I got some bad news. Um, the government are tightening down the restrictions because of COVID, and we won't be able to have the show. 
And at this point, you're thinking, if anything more can go wrong, right. it's, yeah. uh, you know, and it's just crushing. Like, well, I just spent 14 days powering through this, trying to put myself in mind that he's just go through this, thinking, okay, you have to go. And now you're telling me it's not happening. So he, he basically said to me at the time, going, okay, the show can be postponed by another two weeks because I think in two weeks' time they will, they will loosen other restrictions and they can have the show. But it's not guaranteed. Uh, so you're there already thinking, well, I've already sacrificed this much. Right. What's another? You know, so you go ahead with it. And at the time, I, I didn't even let my job know where I was going. You know, so so during that whole process of it, you know, when the news then got out that I was there, they found out about it. And obviously I got a call from my job saying, you're being let go, you know. So at this point, you think, okay, going back home, it's pretty much you're going back to just start all over again. Sure. What you have is now being formed, just between pieces. So kind of stuck it out for a few days. And I remember when that happened, the next day, you know, I got a call from my sponsors, hostile at the time, and I did an interview with Fuad, and he basically heard the story and heard what I was going through. And he goes, you know what? just your drive and what you're willing to do is so crazy that it's something that's not seen often. And he basically offered to sponsor me. Oh, spot. wow. And it was literally right at the point where everything was falling apart and you're thinking, this is it. You don't have this ray of light. Someone just hands you that. Here you go. That's your freedom card. Now pull yourself out, you know. And that for me was like, you know what? Yeah, okay, okay. That was this very thing. nice of Fuan. He was really, I mean, he really, at that point, he really did save me from thinking, okay, that's it, I screwed up. This was the biggest mistake I could have ever made. And, you know, now you're going to pay for it, you know. And he just basically gave me the hands up, going, look, I see what you're doing. I said, we see you, we see you struggling, okay. Here, we want to give you a hand. And from that point on, you know, it just felt like, wow, somebody, there is, there is hope, the hardware mm-hmm. does work. So from that point on, you know, we started training and everything else. We got out and played. The show happened two weeks. I came second in the show in South Korea. And then I remember during that year, and even at the end of that year, I still felt disappointed because I still didn't qualify for the Olympia. You know, and I felt really bad. And I felt really disappointed. I felt really down. And I felt like, man, okay, you know what? No matter how hard I work, it feels like when I take one step forward, I get another two steps sure, back. Yeah. And then forward, basically, I remember speaking to him at the end of 2020, and he said, look, you got all the potential. Everything you need is right there. You know, you just need somebody to help you take you to the next step. He goes, look, I've worked with John before. You know, he's really good. I think he will fit you very well. Why don't you work with him in the, in the future? And I was like, actually, yeah, hell, whatever help I can get, you know. So right a minute, I spoke to John, and we just clicked, you know. Immediately, John looked at me. He was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to make you an Olympian this year. Watch it. We're going we're gonna to shock the world. I'm like, hey, you're the man. If you can say so, I don't. I, I didn't have the belief in it myself. I was like, well, if you say you think you can, let's do it. You know. So we basically started working through that year. Had an off season going through. You know, went all the way through our off season. Came out the Arnold Classic in UK. The list came out. We were in a list for that. So I'm like, okay, we got our first show. So we start prepping for that show, and we were about six weeks out from that show, and then. Right in the mints where everything you started looking going, actually, yeah, we, we're definitely getting somewhere. We're looking, I can see the difference, I can see the changes. I can see that we're, def- we're definitely looking better than we've ever looked. Everything's mm-hmm. come together. You know, I'm starting to believe John's words and believing what he's saying about, look, you're going to shock a lot of people. And everything's come together just so well. And I'm thinking, yeah, okay, yeah, this is the year we're going to make it happen. And then six weeks out, John passes. Yeah. So immediately, your mind goes back to that whole idea of why is it every time I take one step forward, you know, something has to knock you right back, you know. And you can't help but feel like I can't do this anymore. I, I can't I can't keep doing this. You know, I'm giving up a lot and I'm doing everything I can. And it feels like, you know, you're not getting you're not getting anywhere from me. And, and you know, and I remember then just thinking, yeah. I'm done with this, you know. So you're I mean, about to walk away at that walk, point. No, I ain't doing this anymore. It's not worth it, you know. And I remember, you know, getting a lot of messages from people saying, you know what, you and John will work for something special this year. You, he truly believed in you. He truly believed you are going to do something special this year. Finish it off. Finish what you guys started, you know. 
just go for it. You know, he believed in you so much, just go for it. So I basically said, okay, right. If I'm going to do this, I know I need help. There's no getting that. I need somebody that knows the way John walks, knows about what he can do and help me out. So I remember when I was prepping John, John always talked about Milos and Milos' ways and stuff like that. So I basically go, okay, you know what? I basically messaged with Milos at the time. I said, look, obviously this just happened. I was working with John six weeks after the show. I'm completely in pieces at this point. I'm about to walk away from this. And you, you can, I need your help. You diet down, train hard, and supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. If you can't help me, then honestly, I'm, I don't, I don't want to do this. I'm, I'm done. So he basically, right away, he's like, let's go. Let's do it. You know, and we start working and everything just like clicking in place and in place. And then we just went forward and went, did it on the UK. We came second. At that point, it was the first time we walked out on stage where I walked out and like, I was completely confident in my look and what we brought to the stage, you know. Then we went to Italy, uh, came third, third in Italy, then went to um, Egypt, came second in Egypt. And then the last show we went up was EVLS Prague. And I'm looking at the lineup and Milos is saying, man, you're going to win this lineup. I'm looking at the lineup. You got Roly in there. You got Nathan. You got Regan. You got Raphael. You got all the biggest hitters you can right. think about. It. I'm thinking, man. Honestly, uh, I don't know, man. Like, look, I bet you win this lineup. I, I can see it. You just you're looking better every show. You can win this. So we finally did a proud show, and then we won that. And it just basically hit home the idea of, you know what? You didn't stop. You didn't quit. You could have multiple times, but you stuck it out. And here you go, finally, you're making it happen. You've made it happen, you know. It's, it's, it's happening for you now, you know. And for me, that was like, you know, uh, life dreams of, okay, I want to go to Olympia one day. I want to go to Olympia oh, one day. You know, you fight to the nail true for that mm-hmm. dream. Knocked back over and over and over. And you get to the point of thinking, okay, maybe it's not really happening. You try to divert and use other things to substitute that dream, but the dream is still there. And to stick it out through all that and then make it there, to, well, guess what? You stuck to it and there you go. You what was it. going through your mind when you won the Prague show? It was it was beyond belief. It felt like it felt like a weight has just finally been lifted off the chest. For so long you've tried and you right. grind, gradually crawl and you fought. And it just was never good enough. You just was always a little bit short. And there was, oh, you're almost there, you're just not yet. Oh, no, maybe next time. And, and there's only so many times you can hear next time or maybe right. next time. Like, it, it start boiling into you. So when you finally get that leap through, it's like, oh, my God, we, we did it. We finally did it. It's, we, it's done. We've done it, you know. And it's an overwhelming feeling of just joy and happiness and confirmation and, you know, belief of, oh, my, we, this can happen, you know. So it really sort of just, it really did sort of just confirm everything I was praying for for such a long time. So, I mean, now, I mean, from last year to the Arnold to now, I mean, you've made so many drastic improvements. It's incredible. And you still maintain that tiny little waist. And, of course, now you're going to the Olympia. I saw that you were training with Nick Walker. How was that? Who killed who on legs? Oh, Nick killed me on legs. They don't get away from that. <laughs> Nick is an animal. He trains like an animal, man. And honestly, it was that was definitely something. Because with me, like I said, for me, I'm still learning in this sport. And right. As much as I can. I go to different guys and I get different techniques. And I pick a bit from him and pick from him. For just to master what I can do and see which one works best for me. So when I get an opportunity to train with these guys, it's like, oh, my God, yes, please. You know, and they put me through hell and they freaking crush me and I'm wake up and go, yeah, I actually like that. I actually That's love that. You know? So it's for me, it's like, okay, this is something that you saw sort of dreamed about for so long to have the opportunity to meet these guys and train with them. So when it comes up, you don't you don't say no. He's like, okay, no, of course you don't. I mean, you're always going to learn something from somebody, right? But you know what's cool about you is that you are so humble. 
Like you're not yeah. arrogant or any of this stuff. Even you know you can you can be. Listen, I mean uh, everything you've been through, you're so down to earth, and that is like awesome, you know. It's, but I think it's just it's always been my character. Like you know, it's, it's I've never I can't be any other way. I don't I don't know how to be another way. I can't know how to be anything but grateful for the life I have. You know, uh, maybe it's the fact that obviously I came from Nigeria, you know, had nothing, came all the way here and I can, all the things I've sort of dreamt about one day, you know, you have this dream of one day and all of a sudden it starts happening. You don't all of a sudden feel like, well, of course I deserve it. Sure, you feel like right. I'm blessed, you know, this is a blessing that I've had and this life is a blessing to me. So you can't help but be grateful, you know. Well, listen, man, I mean, you've got, I mean, <laughs> You've got bragging rights, too. Tell me about this thing you did with this research project. You're like the most muscular person they've ever met. <laughs> so, Tampa, you know, I was in Tampa, and, you know, I was training with um, Nick and everything else, and uh, the University of Florida, South Florida, basically messaged me. And it was like, look, we we're trying to run this test. We're trying to mus- uh, mus- uh, measure muscularity in, in athletes, and we're trying to find, you know, just try and do this research on it. And they were like, we've reached out to loads of bodybuilders. They don't want to do it. Like, do fans coming down and taking part in the research? So I was like, hell, hell, I'm here. Why not? Let's go. So I went in there, and obviously, they then obviously use the ultrasound and everything else and do all these tests and everything for me. And they were so outstanding. They were like, whoa, yeah, your measurements are, they're the biggest numbers we've measured, we've ever measured. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, yeah, thanks. I like and that. And it's documented. Yeah, and you know, and this is what's funny because they, so when they finally did the test and they came in a few days later, the results came out, and I was like, "Oh, God. and it was like, you know, you know, the most muscular man scientifically ever measured." And I'm trying, I'm going, "Okay, I'm gonna keep this award for as long as I can until someone takes it." So right. for now, I think thank you, much for that. but now it was definitely like it was just one of those things where I wanted to have fun. And I only see, and I was I was always interested in those sort of things. So yeah. when they gave me do it, I was like, "Hell, of course, why not?" You know. Do you ever so measure was, your body fat, any of that stuff? Yeah, they did. They did. They see all the measurements they can and everything else and put it all down and put it all in the graphs and everything else, the amount of body fat, wow. the amount of everything else that you have. And they just put out a graph and they just kind of mess it out like that. I was like, okay. That was awesome. Hey, that's something totally, that's something you want to put on the wall for everybody to see. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's because I'm like, still in difficulty, like, surely that can't be right. But, you know. Okay. Hey, I'll who, else can, who else can say that though, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? You know, so, but listen, yeah, you me... have such an incredible story because you have worked for everything you have, literally. I mean, I know that you've. To me, this is the year of of Samson, the near right. the year of the Nigerian lion, if we can say. It. But seriously, I mean, I think this is going to be phenomenal. Um, I know you have a few. I guess guest appearances and whatnot. Are we going to see you at any other shows this yes, year? Yes, I'm going to a show tomorrow. So tomorrow will probably be the heaviest I've ever guest posted in my life. Oh, wow. Over 300 pounds and 315 pounds and guest posting on a stage tomorrow. So that's a two-bro show here in the UK. And yeah, that one I'm looking forward to because that will definitely be a... I hope I, I don't, you know, gas out and be out of breath or nothing. But yeah, I'm looking forward you to that one. You do the Ronnie one. Coleman thing, put the hands up in the air as you come out well, the thing is even with this weight like we said like even with this weight i still want to make sure that i can keep my flexibility and still pose like you're meant to on stage and still entertain and not just kind of walk you know hit most musculars and just be the big guy on stage but still show people that i've never been to a bodybuilding so i go into one for the first time that bodybuilding is just more than just a big guy with muscles it's more to it than that. It is absolutely awesome. who oh, are your who are your idols in the sport or you know, someone who used to compete, it, it doesn't matter. Who do you look up to? Oh, man. Uh, Physique-wise, Flex Wheeler. I love Flex Wheeler. Sean Ray, another one. Kevin Lavron, I love them. Um, <clears throat> Ronnie, crazy. You know, absolutely crazy. Kai, absolutely blown away. Literally blown away the first time I saw him. Blown away every time I see him pose. Oh, yeah. Just all, wow, that's crazy, you know. So, yeah, two at a time. And then Flex, uh, Flex Lewis, personality of an absolute gentleman you know i remember meeting him the first time in the expo and literally not knowing not knowing much about who he was but knowing he had a queue that was literally down the whole expo and when i finally got up to him i just thought you know i just want a quick picture and walk off and nothing big deal about it and i remember him taking the time and asking me questions and really talking to me and i'm standing there going 
dude, you don't have to do that. What, what? But he was, he genuinely was interested in me. And even up to these days, we still speak about it. And I think, to me, I think that is what a champion should be. And he embodies that persona completely. And ever since having that experience with him, I know full well that that's exactly the same thing I want to carry on going forward myself, to always admire and take the time to actually And you really do. And that's what I admire about you, because you really don't see that. Uh, what does bodybuilding mean to you? Bodybuilding, bodybuilding saved me. It genuinely saved me. You know, I remember growing up, you know, I know those people, you know, they grew up, they ask, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? As a child, and you know, all my friends, they all had answers, doctors, nurse, I want to do this, I want to be an architect, I want to, I never had anything, you know, I never, you know, I knew I wanted to play sports, but I never, I was never committed into any one of them to really say, okay, I want to be this, you mm-hmm. know, went from playing football to basketball to rugby, and I was always good, but I always held myself back just not to shine too much, to always just be comfortable in the group and never stand out. So, you know, for a long time, I was that shy guy that just really, you know, I wanted to be myself, kept myself, just be my own little, my own little secure little spot. And I remember coming into bodybuilding and it basically pulled all them walls down and told me, okay, show the world where you really are. Show it. Don't hold back. Feel proud of what you are. You know, don't, don't ever feel you got to hold yourself back ever again. You know? What would you tell an amateur bodybuilder wanting to, compete or wanting to get into it or someone who's interested in bodybuilding what kind of advice would you give them they take your time and it's a long road but do not give up don't give up it never works out the way you plan it but as long as you stick to it it will still work out just don't fall and give up on the first hurdle you meet. go through it anyway and do you uh you don't have cheat meals right you eat clean all the time i do eat cheat meals you do okay like currently now, I mean, we kind of keep my diet like 80% of my diet is all clean food, but you know, mm. 20% go crazy. Well, I'm not a big eater. I'm not, I don't, you know, most guys have a big appetite. So hitting this weight, it requires a lot of food. Oh, well, and sure. I'm not, and I'm not a big eater. So we kind of find a way to substitute themselves, things like that. But I love the pizzas. I love, you know, love ice cream, you know, this cookies. Yeah. yeah so if you, definitely. if you was a flavor of ice cream, what would you be? Oh, man. Uh, ben and Jerry's, what was it? Uh, cookie dough. Cookie dough. <laughs> I love Ben and Jerry cookie dough, man. Okay. Uh, what's uh, what's with the Olympia prep? When do you guys? I know you want to get to the three thirty, three fifty, three thirty mark. Um, when are you going to start buckling down on prep? We're basically planning to start in September. Okay. That gives us enough time to really kind of work things down. So. For the main time, I want to see how much how much my body can tolerate. How come how much before he actually gets upon? I mean, right now it already feels uncomfortable walking around this way. But I want to say, okay, how much can you take? How long will you go before you can still hold your lines and still hold your keep your stomach flat? And how much can your body really tolerate in that sense? You know, people have even compared you to Sean Roden as far as your physique and you know the way you're structured. Which you know he obviously was a great, oh, great man. structure Absolutely. physique, great guy. Um, where do you see yourself placed in the Olympia? Personally, I would love to see you win the Olympia. Of course. Uh, well, because I like, it's my first Olympia, so I'm not under any delusion. This Olympia lineup is going to be absolutely stacked. Oh, yeah. It's qualified already, it's already stacked. And you've got so many other guys that still have to qualify, and you're already looking at it going, wow. Do you think we're going to see Derek Lunsford in the Open? Um, I don't think so. No, if I, if I was him, I would try to get one more title. And then and go this, into the open. That's exactly. I mean, for me personally, that's what I would do. Yeah. You know, I'll try to get more time. I wouldn't just win my first Olympia and then I quickly run to the next one. Right. I don't think that's the best bet, but that's just me. You now, know? what do you think of like Hunter Labrada or or Nick Walker? Yeah, love both of them guys. Spoke to both of them, and they are serious competitors. Oh, yeah. they're serious. They're a serious target for me, man. Because honestly, them guys, they the new breed. Oh yeah. New well, yeah, listen, you, I mean, you're young still. You still got a ways to go. You're just a baby. So, I mean, you're you're in that young breed. So, I mean, listen, you can walk into this Olympia working with Milos. Milos knows his stuff. He's great at training. He's very scientific. Oh, yeah. You know? Definitely. I mean, extremely. I can't understand some of this stuff. Yeah, he's extremely scientific. Yes. And extremely 
precise about what he wants to do, you know. And what you know, I, I like is that, you know, he has other athletes as well, but you yeah. guys all work together. Because I know oh, sometimes there's that, you know. I, I'm, the thing is, I, I don't feel like, because we know, because he always says the same thing, and I feel the same mindset, okay. Bring all of us our best and let the judges right. sew it. We don't, we don't, it makes no sense. I really don't find it. It makes no sense for me to be mad or look like the next guy and go, oh man, you gave more attention. Because it doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, he's not his say, he's not my say. We're both going to stand there at our best and the judges are going to pick who they like. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. No, his fault, not my fault. That's just what it is. So for, when you think about it like that, I can help him be at his best. He can help me be at my best. We don't both, we both don't get a say on who, who the judges prefer on that mm -hmm. day. It makes no sense for us to then bump heads with each other on that. No, it doesn't. Day. You guys should just work together, you know? May the best person win. That's it. Exactly. You know? Let's talk about this. Uh, I know you, I don't want to keep you much longer and get you ready for your stuff. I know you got to travel and pack and all that. Your BMW. What? Oh. Your MA50i? Oh, yeah. Jeez, man, you ain't playing around. Oh, man. Oh, I know that you was a new house, too. I mean, that's what I'm saying. This is the year of Samson. All these uh, blessings you work so hard for. This is, you know, it's absolutely after all the times, you know, we used to live in a small one-bedroom apartment. We used to sort of struggle to get by for years. You know, we invested, like, both me and my partner, we both worked full-time job and then worked overtime just to, you know, invest in me bodybuilding sure. for years. And year after year, we just didn't get the result we want. We spent a lot of money. It just didn't go the way we want. And, you know, as a man, if you sit in there and you see your partner struggle and yourself struggle, to follow your dream and they spend a lot of time, your dream is not working out. There's only so much you can tell. Mm -hmm. There's only so much you can say, yeah, let's just go again, let's go again. Because then you start thinking, no, it's not worth it. So when at that moment you are that crossroad where it's almost about that time we say, no, nah, no more. And then it takes over the other way and go, whoa. And all of a sudden you can now afford a house. You can now afford what you want. You, can, you have to stand back and go and smile and go, oh my God, this is, this is incredible. This is crazy, you know? So, yeah, so obviously when we got the place and everything else, my one thing, I've always, always been in cars and everything else. And I was like, yeah, I would like to own a really fast car one day, you know? You know get a little well, yeah, that's pretty damn fast. What's so, the next ride you have? Do uh, you have any other rides planned in your mind that you want to get? Uh, I, I do, but I don't want to say it because my missus, she's going to oh. be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, again, this is what I love about you because if – one thing I, I stand by is that I love seeing other people be successful. I'm always happy for that person. And so with you, with everything you've been through, I mean, literally, you worked hard for everything you have, that body, just everything. I applaud that so much because in the, at the end of the day, you're still a very humble person down the earth. You care about the fans. You love the sport. You're very passionate. You give the sport a breath of fresh air, the entertainment value. I mean, my God, this Olympia is going to be off the charts and i cannot yep. wait to see the posing routine that you have planned yep i'm really looking forward to this i mean i've always thought of dreamt about what it would be like um, then in olympia stage for your first olympia so you can only imagine how it feels now are you going to be happens. spanking those asses on stage <laughs> oh, we're going we to bring some. we're definitely going to bring some. oh yeah so, okay but, so. well, samson listen uh give your girl a hug for me and i thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come on here on the fit rockstar show and i'm looking forward to seeing you in orlando um hostel i'm a big fan of them they do amazing again it's amazing what fuad does for the athletes because oh. he really cares he oh, really please. does so i mean i'm gonna leave i'm gonna leave it with you if there's anything you want to say anything you want to say to your sponsors it's all yours I mean, like, obviously, I always like to thank Fuad and Summer for giving me the opportunity of a lifetime. And, something, you know, they reached out and they picked me out when no one else would have looked twice. So I always got to say thanks to them. My coach, Milos, I know he's watching my ass right now, waiting, <laughs> sending my check-in. I mean, don't worry. And, you know, my lady, always been there, always had my back. So I got to say thanks to all these people. All right. Well, listen, thank you so much, Samson. I can't wait to see you. Good luck in all your training and traveling, and uh, God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank all right, you. Huh? Till next time. Thank you.